What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Tai Chi to the People, part of Justice for Hires, uh, cinematic universe experience, and uh, Justice for Hires, a show that we are producing as a community. And we have uh, anyone can join the cast, no matter where you are in the world. And uh, we have, uh, yeah, hero training every week. And this is Tai Chi to the People. We dedicate our training every week to a different noble cause. And it's free and open to everyone. But if you want to donate, you can donate to the cause of the week. And this week, it's uh, Save the Children. You can go uh, to our Instagram and uh, donate directly to Save the Children from the top of our Instagram, at Justice for Hire. And you'll see the campaign running right at the top. So today, uh, and, and we've switched our format up uh, within the last week. So today we're going to be focusing on uh, a very particular style of pummeling and bringing the Tai Chi mechanics into uh, pummeling. So uh, if you are a wrestler or a grappler of any sort, you are familiar with pummeling to uh, some extent. So uh, pummeling can be done many different ways. And you know some people uh, emphasize the shoulder. Some people uh, emphasize the chest. You may have seen people swimming through this is kind of um, you're essentially transitioning from uh if i can have uh, autumn here lovely uh student here uh also jfh cast member aka wonder so you're in this 50 50 clinch and you've often seen i'm sure people switching their stance and doing this i'm going to switch the camera just so you can see a little bit more of the body mechanic so this is a standard pummel you're in this 50-50 clinch, meaning that we're both, we both have the same position. I have one hand on the outside, on the elbow area, and the other hand is on the inside, which is essentially going for toward an underhook. But I'm also uh, slightly pinned, or could be potentially pinned, under her um, elbow. And now you can see mine, under my elbow. So the general pummel is this. And you can do it switching your stance, or you can keep the feet the same, the stance the same. And this happens all the time, this little transition when you're doing, when you're grappling. Now, the Tai Chi version of this is specific to the fingertips. And we're going to work on this all day today. Tai Chi, if you don't know, of course, is a, is a martial art. And uh, I'm, I'm still going to use Autumn in a moment to, to show you a little bit extra detail. But... But this uh, Tai Chi push hands, which is the uh, two person exercise has a sport component. I've coached the US team for that uh, sport component. It's Tai Chi push hands and it's essentially Greco wrestling or super wrestling or judo, very, very similar in terms of explosive speed. So one of the details that differentiates Tai Chi from judo, sumo, Greco Roman, sambo is this concept of having the fingers being pulled to a destination. And that's coordinated with your breath. So you're inhaling, and it's as if the breath is pulling the fingers through a destination. Uh, there are many different concepts in Tai Chi and ways to do this. Uh, and even this concept may be unfamiliar to you if you do Tai Chi. You may have never heard of this before because there are many different forms of Tai Chi. So this will up your game no matter what you do, whether you do Tai Chi or not. The concept of not only inhaling and having your fingers pulled to the destination, which is akin to a... Uh, it's akin to the offensor. So offensor uh, versus someone else with a sword who's thrusting the sword, the concept of, of in fencing with your saber is having the tip of the blade to be pulled to the opponent. The tip is pulled to the opponent rather than thrust into the opponent. The body mechanic is different. The intention is different. And because the intention is different, it changes the body mechanic. Anytime you change the intention, it changes the body mechanic. And it's so subtle, and because the intention is, uh, there, there is so much detail here, and the, your attention to detail needs to become more and more refined to actually pick up on the subtleties, uh, we're articulating those right now. So this concept of being pulled to the destination, you're going to feel, and it's not the whole arm, it's really just the fingertip. The rest of the arm follows, but the fingertips are pulled. If you were allowing, let's say, the elbow to be pulled, or the tricep or shoulder to be pulled, it would change the body mechanic. Again, this is my shoulder. Some people use the chest in pummeling, or the shoulder. And you can add those elements, but the core concept here, and the reason you're doing this, is to claim space and to be able to maintain your posture while breaking your opponent's posture to bend to your will. So the concept here, you're playing in a ring, you want to throw someone on the floor, someone on the floor, you want to move them out of the ring. 
you want to be able to break their posture, control their posture, control their body weight, move it where you want it to go. And part of that, it's and there's, there's a bunch of subtleties there in terms of ego as well, because if you think you're so powerful, you may uh, be uh, too focused on your own body rather than having the expanded awareness to be able to uh, recognize that your opponent's body actually is your body. Your opponent's body and your body come together to create a new center. And this new center, whoever's the most aware of this new center, controls that new center. So when you're doing the pummeling, and we'll do solo exercises on this as well, but just so you can see, you see the line through her back here. Really, really important. This is her, her, her posture, this is her center line. And so I want to break that center line awareness. Whether someone is aware of it or not, they have center line awareness. So that's part of the reason when you do Tai Chi, you start out with your palms facing down, imaginary string lifting you from the top of the head, and you just feel the spinal cord, not just the spine, the awareness inside in the center of the body, you feel it all the line. Mouth closed, tongue in the cylinder of the mouth, giving the sensation of breathing and color with your eyes open. So you inhale and see the breath, visualize it, see, feel, and experience it, gathering in your belly as a color, whatever color intuitively comes to you. When you exhale, you wash that color out down through the palms and fingertips. This exercise, which is not unique to Tai Chi, there's many variations of this exercise. You'll see it popping up in many different cultures. It happens in yoga. Uh, I've seen many CEOs do this on, on uh, in meetings. Just to center your, your posture, to center yourself internally you're looking for that string the imaginary string some some disciplines call it the silver cord above your head and permeates the body the awareness the subtle awareness of this concept again even if someone's a brute who has never trained in it like in these types of, of uh, uh detail this type of detail before um god bless <laughs> Uh, even if they are very, very brutish in their movements, you're still going to be able to break their center line awareness, and they'll, they're still going to have a desire to return to the sense of center loss, uh, centeredness. So the second you break someone's center line awareness, which is essentially just breaking the posture, and the best way that I found to do it is to inhale. The second you do it, they're going to want to come back. And when they want to come back and they pummel, boom, you break it again. So I'm reaching through with the intent, reaching through with the intent not to move her, but to, which is a, another subtle detail, not to move her, but I'm reaching straight through creating a shape. And so now, one second, thank you. Now I'm creating this shape as if she's not there. So the byproduct of me doing that is breaking her center line awareness. Of course, I want to break her center line of awareness, but this is something we've talked about in the past, which is taking the fight out of the fight. So if you think too much about I'm breaking their center line, then you're getting into the fight, which means that you're getting to, you're starting to absorb unnecessary tension in your body, which can be very destructive and it causes lack of optimization in your movement as a, as a player, as a competitor, et cetera. So you wanna use minimal effort to accomplish the goal. So with this minimal effort, Mark, Mark just joined us. Uh, with this minimal effort, you want to, I'm bringing, pinning myself so I can actually uh, see myself as I can, as, I, as I'm doing this. So as, as you're looking through, uh, Mark, we're talking about uh, pummeling right now. So as we're talking about pummeling through the 50-50, I'm inhaling and I'm just going for the concept of this shape, of course, I have my other hand here. This shape, I'm making this shape, this reach, reach right through. If you were throwing a punch, same thing. If you're throwing a jab, I'm reaching all the way through, creating a posture. So whatever the shape is, your final shape that you know to be the full extension, that's what you want to be able to do when you're in the midst of this, this pummeling. So I'm creating a shape. I'll, I'll, actually, we'll switch sides just so I can do the same exact shape. I'm creating this shape. And I know that by, by nature of my body mechanics, because I know my shape, 
that when I finish this shape, I will be cutting through inherent to the shape itself, to the structure of the shape, it cuts through her center line. As a matter of fact, you'll notice that it cuts through her center line right around here. So let's bring her back in. This is, this is a hyper detail moment <laughs> for, tai, for Tai Chi Push Hand, very excited about it. Right here, I feel it on my bicep, I feel it on my, uh, in the, the pocket of my elbow, the, the uh, upper part of my forearm, I can feel, and now she's, as you see, she's pushing back on it. So she wants to get back. So that's one of the things you want to focus on being able to pay, to to predict. This is pattern recognition. You know that by taking her center line and breaking her connection to it, or more specifically, disrupting her posture so she feels like she, her center is off or she's off center, she's going to want to return to that. So that slight, without having to fight for it, having to push too much to slam shoulders or slam chest. You simply create this shape and right around here is where it's going to happen. Now, the reason this is important is because then you can start to time, time and take advantage of the timing uh, to set up other moves. So, and again, we're going to go through, uh, go over a bunch of, of uh, moves here that uh, will, will help you to build this, this technique, this skill. But one, inhale. So I'm, I'm inhaling. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Again, I'm inhaling on the reach, which is a very particular biomechanic. You can also exhale, but the concept is that you want to train the body for one breath uh, with the breath first and stay consistent with whatever the breathing mechanic is. And then you, once, once you've done it enough, you'll be able to, to deviate from that breathing mechanic and still get the same result. But if you don't have the discipline to, to uh, keep the breathing mechanic consistent, um, it, it, it may affect your ability to execute the move in the most uh, nuanced way. So again, we're just doing very standard pummeling. And if you haven't seen standard pummeling before, it's essentially swimming in with the hand, pummel in. So I'm on the, I have elbow control here. I also have wrist control here. So if I let go of elbow control, I still have wrist control. I can turn and I can move her. <laughs> She's pushing me away. But essentially I can turn and move her right here. I can even use my upper bicep to press. So you pin the elbow, but you don't have to flex and press it down too hard. Now I will flex and press it down as I start to execute this move. But in general, you just have the awareness and a very, in the very gentle uh, pressure, but it is absolutely pressure of having the elbow so relaxed, it's as if gravity is pulling it down, which will put the weight of this arm onto the opponent's um, wrist. So that creates a very uh, subtle pin. It will be less subtle if you squeeze. If you squeeze, you're letting your opponent know, even if it's subconsciously, that you are uh, using this as a control point. If you don't squeeze, it'll just feel like they're tucked in and it won't feel dangerous. And if they feel danger, they're going to respond. And you only want them to respond when you want them to respond because you want to control their, their thinking through pattern recognition. So we're here. The other hand, once again, is on the inside. Wait a second. The other hand is on the inside. So what you couldn't see on the camera before is the exact opposite. My hand is on, uh, uh, should be pinned near her, um, above her elbow. She's pinned with the elbow. It's, it, so pummeling, one hand extended, one hand coming in. Again, some people do this with the shoulder or the elbow um, or the chest, but we are very much focused on the reach here, the reach allowing this full extension. And now let's, let's actually get right down to doing this as a, thank you so much, Alan. doing this as a solo exercise. So we're here, 70% of the weight forward, and again, you want to be able to adapt this to whatever your martial art is. So if you're not a Tai Chi person, fine, that's great. Um, whatever you are, if you're a boxer, notice that you'll, you'll still have the same stance. You can do whatever your martial art is, you'll be able to do this exercise and have it benefit you. So you're going to have 70% of your weight forward. And we're actually going to have this crease in the groin 
here, open rather than close, meaning collapse inward, which we often do with our training here. So we're gonna have it open as you reach. Inhale, it opens. Exhale down. Inhale as you reach. And notice that one hand is, for the, is, is in that control position, in that 50-50 clinch position. And also notice that I had to make an adjustment this now, because, uh, just now, because of the fact that I pulled my arm back unnecessarily. So you always want to be aware of yourself. The elbow should be straight down. If you find yourself overcompensating because of the reach, meaning that you want to extend outward, this could be a wonderful stretch. Don't get me wrong, this is great, but it's not necessarily practical from a martial perspective. So anytime you deviate from the practical of the martial, um, it's always fine, as long as you can turn that part of you, uh, get back to practical immediately when you need it. And uh, oftentimes the, you know, your, your muscle memory may not kick in <laughs> if you don't practice it in a practical way. So inhaling up, exhaling down inhaling up and reach and again this is the point we're talking about right here the bicep tricep uh, the, the bicep upper forearm area exhale down inhaling up exhale down so you can see my stance work 70 percent of the weight forward forward the back knee falling down both feet are planted firmly on the ground there might be times when you're doing this live, meaning sparring, et cetera, and your back foot is up, meaning your back heel is up, like a boxer or a Muay Thai fighter. Or you might find yourself in times where both heels are off the ground and you're on the balls of your feet and you're pummeling in. But in general, you, I do recommend clamping the heel into the ground, at least one of them, and for this, the purpose of this solo exercise, keeping both of the heels down. And again, starting from the lead hand, lead foot, inhale, reach, and create your shape. Your shape of, the sh your end shape should make you feel like the, your center line is straight. It should also make you feel like the weight of your body has shifted slightly to the ball of the foot and the big toe, which help to activate the inhalation for the reach of the fingers. I focus on these three fingers, especially the index finger for the reach with these two fingers supporting. I've recently been given instruction from Grandmaster to utilize these three, but I cannot uh, vouch for that from my own personal competitive experience. I can only vouch for these three. So I am experimenting with the other one and I will let you know how that goes over time. So inhaling, reaching, exhale, drop down, 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 down. Inhale, reach. And now I'm looking at myself in the, in the Zoom camera because I wanna make sure that I'm, not, that I'm uh, uh, going off of the feeling and I know that this shape is the feeling I'm looking for. And I can also see that there's a slight, while my back is straight, it is slightly 40, it's slightly angled. It's not straight upright, meaning here. So I am engaged, I am in, uh, I, I, I'm in fighting. I'm essentially like chest to chest with the person. Exhaling down, inhaling up here. So notice I'm making that slight adjustment here as well. So there is, my, my, my center line is straight but it's not straight up, meaning that I've put myself in a position to get knocked over my own hip because I'm doing my best to stay quote unquote centered. You can be straight, but on an angle. And that really just depends on the pelvis rotating on the femur. This is, so you can be straight here, you can be straight here, you can be straight here. I still have a straight back. My spine is still essentially what I'm, uh, what we would call straight in Tai Chi. And straight always has quotations around it because there's always curves in the body, uh, but it is not a hard, straight military, uh, and which is also technically not straight as well because if you're sticking out your chest, you're arching your back. <laughs> so inhale, reach, exhale, down. And you can just do this exercise as a Nagong exercise, and I'm just switching angles. 
Inhaling up. And exhaling down. Inhaling up. And switch legs. I'm just switching to a side view so you can see this again. Inhaling up. Again, this is really what you want. You at the end of that reach, you want to feel, you want to feel the pull. Whoever's here, the willpower becomes so important here. The willpower to create this shape, especially when you're going with opponent, opponents that are heavier than you. This is something that, that is, is really important because just because someone's heavier doesn't necessarily mean that their willpower is stronger. So <laughs> oftentimes it's not. So you want to really make sure that you feel that whatever could possibly be here, nothing can stop this shape. The shape is completed just because you will it so. And it's activated by the breath, you fill up. You know exactly what shape you want to get to. And, to. and to make this even more specific and practical, because a term like willpower can be so weighted. It's like, oh, well, what, is he, what are you really talking about? Well, will willpower also connects to familiarity. So I'm familiar with what it feels like at the apex of this reach. I'm very familiar with it. So you want to get familiar about, with where you feel the most powerful and where you feel the most structurally sound when you finish this reach. I know that right here, I feel the most structurally sound, which means that you're going to have to spend time under pressure, not just reaching into the air, even though that's super important too. It's important to have no pressure and create these shapes, but it's also important to have pressure and create these shapes. So you can choose a wall if you like and really reach into the wall or a tree and really reach. Really find a place where you pressing into the wall allows for every bit of your strength being reached, or should I say pulling yourself into the wall, the fingers being pulled into the wall, where the pressure on the fingertips, the entire body, all the way down the leg into the ground reinforces that pressure, reinforces the connection to the pressure. So I can feel the pressure circuit here, meaning that I don't have to do too much moving of my arm. And you can do it even on your own hand. You can do it on, just as an example, I can feel where all the pressure that I can feel solid throughout the entire structure. That I know if, if more pressure comes, I can, I can just add and add and add uh, intensity in terms of focus and my willpower to support whatever pressure is coming. That doesn't mean that you can withstand any type of pressure. That just means that you can get enough of your power into a moment so that you can essentially hold off whatever pressure is there, even for a split second, so that you can make another decision. So a lot of times when we're talking about pressure circuits, uh, we're not talking about uh, the ability to withstand 100 people pushing you, which most of the time is BS uh, when you see a teacher doing that. But it's really more so about being able to withstand a large amount of pressure for fractions of a second so that you can then uh, redirect it and do something with it. So that's really what pressure circuits are about. And it's less about the, uh, the, the, the more extravagant uh, public demonstrations you might have seen. So when you inhale, extend out, go break that center line, exhale back down. Inhale, extend out. You want to feel completely centered in your shape. Notice that I'm reaching, I'm on purpose in front for the purpose of zoom, on purpose covering my face because I know that my nose is, my hands directly in front of my nose, especially this middle finger or my index finger. You can switch whichever one you want to prioritize. Exhaling down, which means that 
my eye line, my nose are helping me to establish my center line. If you're boxing, you have your target coming from your nose to your hand, your crosshairs. So you know what that feels like. You know what that feels like. So you're bringing the same concept to the reach. Coming down, you go right through to the center of the crosshairs and look what that does to the structure. You want to pay attention to it. It's also important to note that I am inflating my tricep very slightly with the inhalation. So it's not a Wing Chun style reaching through, keeping my elbow down, which would also be very similar in Wu style Tai Chi, another style of Tai Chi that I do, where the arms are like blades and the elbows are consistently kept down on purpose. This is not that. You are inflating the tricep here to get a spinning motion, which helps to uproot your opponent. That spinning motion, that drilling motion, is part of what helps to break their center line, to knock them off their center line. And again, as I was saying earlier, you don't want to think about that too much because you, you, do, you want to get, you want to remove the fight from the posture. So that you're simply doing the optimized version of the posture without the stress or the unnecessary tension of the concept of fighting. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. So the other hand now, the bottom hand, I put a very, very gentle spin on the bottom hand as well. And the spin is mostly with the thumb and activating index and middle finger. 